Hello, and welcome to another tutorial video for CSCI 2824, Discrete Structures. Today, we'll be discussing one of the most important forms of argument you'll use in computer science, weak induction. In words, weak induction can be described as follows. We're going to show that some argument works in its most basic form. We then assume it holds for some arbitrary value and prove it holds for the next arbitrary value. To make this definition a little more simple, we can break it into three parts. The first part is our base case. This is where we prove the most basic form. The second part of our argument is the inductive hypothesis. This is where we make an assumption for some arbitrary value. And our final step of the argument will be the inductive step. The most important thing about the inductive step is that we will invoke our inductive hypothesis. And we will use that to prove that the next arbitrary value works. Perhaps another way we can illustrate the concept of weak induction is with dominoes. Suppose we're trying to prove that we can push over some amount of dominoes in a row. Our base case would be one domino. We know that we can push over one domino. Now, we might make some sort of a hypothesis or an assumption. We would say, well, suppose we can push over four dominoes. We would then want to invoke our inductive hypothesis in the inductive step. We would take these four dominoes and say, by our inductive hypothesis, we can push those over. That works because in our hypothesis, we showed that we can push over four dominoes. So in this step, we should be able to push over four dominoes as well. We would use that to prove that as a whole, we could push over five dominoes. Now, Let's work our way into some in a, an actual example problem to show that this works. We are trying to prove that 2 to the n is less than n factorial for n greater than or equal to 4. And the first thing we need to do is make a base case. In this case, the argument only holds when n is greater than or equal to 4. So our base case will be n equals 4. We know that 2 to the 4th equals 16. And we also know that 4 factorial, which equals 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, is equal to 24. 16 is less than 24. And so our base case holds. Now we're going to go into the inductive hypothesis, where we make an assumption. To begin this, we're going to suppose that n equals k for some k. This is where we create an arbitrary value. We will now say that, well, if n equals k, it must be the case that 2 to the k is less than k factorial. All we've done here is taken k and plugged it into the equation for n, because n equals k. Now we're going to go into our inductive step. I've written out this step with the actual step and an explanation to make it easier for you to understand. Now this isn't something you actually have to do on solving the problem, but I highly recommend it. It makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on in the argument itself. So. In our inductive step, 
we want to prove that this works for the next arbitrary value. So it should be the case that 2 to the k plus 1, our next arbitrary value, is less than k plus 1 factorial. We're now going to work our way through some basic math to show that this is actually the case. So first, let's simplify 2 to the k plus 1 to 2 to the k times 2 to the 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. This works because x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. Essentially, we've done the inverse of this step. We had 2 to the k plus 1, and we broke it down into two different parts, 2 to the k and 2 to the 1. Now, we're going to work on that factorial. We can actually say that k plus 1 factorial is equal to k plus 1 times k factorial. So this is essentially the definition of a factorial. For example, above, we could have broken down 4 factorial into 4 times 3 factorial. Now, we get to invoke our inductive hypothesis. In our inductive hypothesis, we said that 2 to the k is less than k factorial. Right now, we have a 2 to the k, and we have a k factorial. So we can say, okay, 2 to the k is less than k factorial, and this is by our inductive hypothesis. However, one portion of our equation still remains. We still have 2 to the 1 and k plus 1. However, we're trying to show that this equation holds for n is greater than or equal to 4. In this case, k is greater than or equal to 4. So, if k is greater than or equal to 4, then k plus 1 must be greater than 2 to the 1. And that is also is not by our inductive hypothesis, my bad. That is just a definition of math, essentially. So, we've now proven that both parts of this side of the equation are going to be less than the parts of this side of the equation. Thus, it holds that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. And we can write a little box to say, hey, we're done with this proof. Weak induction is really important to understand, so I really stress that you guys continue to watch videos and ask for help when trying to go over this concept. It's a form of argument that you'll be using a lot in computer science. Thanks so much for watching, and good luck.